What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. We're back in our video. This one's going to be about what does the Bible say about homosexuality? And I'm, I'm going to make this like a series because I made a video on my other channel. Make sure you guys subscribe to that channel. It's at Mark the Messenger Live. I'm going to be making series on that channel and this channel too as well. So, uh, But I made a video on there like a couple days ago talking about what does the Bible say about tattoos? And all I did was give people a scripture. And now I'm the enemy. Now I'm the horrible person. <laughs> So when you're convicting people, this is what this is one thing I noticed. Like instead of them, you know, getting convicted and you know taking the action to repent to change their ways, they're gonna try to find fault in the person that's convicting them. That's y'all gotta stop doing that, bro. Y'all gotta stop doing that. Okay. I personally could care less what you do with your life. I could care less. Homosexuality, tattoos, eating pork, lobster, crab, celebrating pagan holidays. I could care less. That's your life. You do what you do, bro or sis, do what you do. But me being a messenger, I'm going to inform the people what God says. Okay. This is not how I feel. What I think is right. I'm going what God thinks is right. And I'm just giving the message. All right. So I remember I made a video talking about tattoos. And you had so many people who were offended. So many people were, you know, hurt. And what's up with a lot of these dudes too, is mostly men who are hurt. The low testosterone, the excessive porn watching, um, what what's going on? The GMO food, like what's going on, man? <laughs> I Babylon is getting worse. It's getting worse. But let's get it. Let's go, man. This is what the Bible says. I have three verses to share with you guys. The first verse is Leviticus chapter twenty, verse thirteen. It says, "If a man also lie with mankind as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them." Now, some people might say, you know, a lot of people say this. Oh, that's the Old Testament. You know, this doesn't matter no more. Or we're not living in the Old Testament no more. Okay, when it comes to the Bible, you either believe the whole thing or you don't believe nothing. We're not cherry picking what verses to follow, what verses not to follow. Oh, that's the New Testament. I'm going to go over the New Testament. Uh, that's the Old Testament. I'm going to go over some New Testament scriptures too as well. I'm going to make this very clear. This is not me hating you. I could care less what you do with your life. But me being the messenger, I'm going to show you what God says. This is not what I say. Okay, and you got to think about it. If everyone was, if everyone was practicing that act, there'll be the, the depopulation. There'll be no humans. We, we wouldn't be born if our parents practiced that. We wouldn't be born. Okay, so always keep that in mind. All right, next verse is this is this is deep. This is Romans chapter one verse twenty four twenty eight. Okay, so it says, "Wherefore God has also gave them up." To the uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who change the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the cre uh, creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Check this out. Verse 26 says, For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their woman did change a natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the man, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their own lusts, one towards another, man with man, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobated mind to do those things which are not convenient. Okay, so it talks about a reprobated mind, a mind that feeds off of sin. Okay, that's what a reprobated mind is, a mind that feeds off of sin, a mind that goes against God, and goes against his law, such and commandments. That's what, that's what a reprobate mind is. Okay, so... Um, we're seeing, you know, they tell us that, you know, love is love and that war, the, the love word they're using, they're using that to justify sin and that's dangerous, okay? Now we know God is love, but you can't be saying love, love. If God's telling you that there's a certain lifestyle, that will lead you to hell. That won't, that you will not inherit the kingdom of God, which I have another verse to go over in a bit, okay? That's not love. Love is actually telling people the truth. Love is actually getting people to repent, to save their soul. That is love, okay? Love, love, love to, to stay in sin, to stay, to stay in wickedness, to stay in abomination. That is not love, man. So it's time for people to really face the truth. And if you think that I'm wrong, you know, if you think, even though I'm giving you guys scripture, <laughs> so I, I can't be wrong because God, God is not a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. I'm telling you what the Bible says, okay? But let's say for whatever reason, those demons are deceiving you. Their demons are get, trying to get you to attack me because I'm telling you the truth. How about you humble yourself? And you seek out answers from the Most High Himself. How about you have a personal relationship with the Son Jesus Christ, so He can wash you from your sins, and He can show you the way. And while when you you know you have to put into action through your faith, through your works, okay, faith without works is dead. And you you know staying on the narrow path, you know maybe you start doing some prayer, start fasting, okay. It's up to you to put in the work. 
Remember, through your faith, because we're saved by our faith through grace. So your faith is going to produce works to get you to get out of that lifestyle. Okay, I know the, the Christians like to say, oh, faith, 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 and that's it. You know, but no, you got to work on your own salvation. You got to, you know, get those demons out of you. You know, certain sins, you know, you got to fight, fight it off. Fight those demons off, straight up. Okay, and like I said, they're using love, love, love. And it, it's getting so wicked out here in Sodom and Gomorrah, in Babylon, that... There, the color, you know that the the color, the, the rainbow flag they use, right? That was actually a, a symbol that God wasn't going to flood the earth, but Satan has corrupted it to where you know that that's crazy. That that is crazy. But see, Satan, the great deceiver. Okay, the Bible says Satan deceives the entire earth. Revelation chapter twelve, verse nine. So you got to ask yourself: Am I deceived? Am I walking in the spirit and truth, or am I picking and uh, picking and choosing what verses to follow? You know, am I being lukewarm? Am I being a typical uh, lukewarm Christian? Am I just playing church? Am I am I just listening to pastors who are gonna get me to stay in sin? Not I don't want to listen to the pastors to get me to get out of sin. I don't want to listen to them. I'm actually gonna get mad at them in the comment section. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the dislike button. You know, and you do what you gotta do. It doesn't doesn't bother me. But like I said, I'm just a messenger, and I'm ready for the stones to get cast. And I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. And like I said, very clear too. I make this very clear. I can care less how you live your life. That's your life, okay? Your life, you do what you want to do. People have asked me this question. I guess I'm going to make this a series, what the Bible says about a certain thing. I already have a next one coming up soon. But this is what it's all about, okay? If your pastor's not telling you this, a lot of these Christian churches, guys, is spiritually dead, okay? So yeah, spiritually dead. A lot of these, a lot of these churches are spiritually dead. They have, there's no Holy Spirit, so there's no conviction. There's no, you know, repenting. There's no like, you know, dang, you know, I gotta, I gotta be better. And that's how we're supposed to be when you fellowship. It's holding each other accountable. But nowadays, all the ear tickling, uh, you know, all that playing church, that has to be done, bro. Like y'all gotta, like, if you have a church that's not really bringing any type of conviction, you don't feel the Holy Spirit. You just don't. I, I personally, for me, I would leave. That's what I would do. Now you, you, you're you being your own man or you living your own life, okay, you, you got to make your own decision. But for me, you know, if I see a church of spiritually dead, no conviction, no Holy Spirit, I'm walking away. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have one more verse to show with you guys. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Okay, this is what the Bible says about those who do not inherit God's kingdom. So it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Okay, the Bible says over and over and over again, be not deceived, be not deceived, be not deceived, okay? Be not deceived because many people are deceived. They use love to deceive them. They, you know, they, don't be deceived, guys. This is what God says, not what Mark the Messenger says. I'm just telling you what God says. So I can't be wrong because God's not a liar. So if you're saying that I'm wrong for giving you this, this verse, that means you're calling God a liar. Whoa, whoa, whoa into those, okay? So be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor uh, adulterers, nor, effe nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor convenious, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extraordinators shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Okay, so that means that we were once one of these things, okay? Not, not everyone was effeminate, not everyone was a fornicator. Not everyone was um, abusing themselves of mankind. Not everyone was that. But we, some of us, you know, some of us were, were drunkards. Some of us were thieves. You know, we so we were one of those things. But it says that, but you are washed and sanctified and you are justified by the Lord Jesus, by the spirit of our God. So we were once in, in this list. Okay. If we didn't repent, if we use scriptures to justify our sin, or if we say spiritually dead, the Bible makes it clear that we will not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. We, we, you know, but because that we accepted the truth, we accepted Jesus in our hearts and our spirits and our minds to transform us, to renew us. We now came out of certain lifestyles. Okay, we all, we now came out of you know the uncleanliness, and you know, and Christ has made us clean, and it also has made us free from the truth. Okay, because we we weren't we weren't. Um, you know, oh, maybe God's wrong or, you know, maybe I should listen to my pastor and, you know, the pastor who's not being led by the Holy Spirit, a pastor who's probably a child of Satan, because best believe you have, uh, Satan has his pastors too. Okay. The Bible says that Satan disguises himself 
as an angel of light. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Just because someone's playing church or, you know, stuff like that, or, or someone's a pastor or someone's like a bishop, not to say that the, all of them are, but I'm just saying that, you know, there's a lot of churches. There's a church right next to my house that has the, the, the LG flag, which is crazy to me, okay? Because those people who come into your church, you should show them the truth. And, you know, now it doesn't mean that you have to come at them harsh, but you got to let them know the truth, bro. Like, that type of lifestyle shouldn't be, it shouldn't be practice or, you know, uh, you know, accepted, you know, it, it should be something that, you know, Hey, like you got to fight it off. Just like when I had my demons, we all had our own demons. I had to fight that off. I didn't make excuses. Okay. Now it wasn't easy to fight those demons off saying knew that my calling was big so I could reach to you guys. So he would attack me more, but in the midst of it all had the armor on fought back against these demons, these devils, uh, didn't allow the spirit of fear to get the best of me. And uh, now here, look what I'm doing. So all praise to the Most High and to the Son, Jesus Christ. I uh, hope you guys got edified from this video. Uh, this is what the Bible says about homosexuality. If you guys want to check this out for yourself, it's in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. And Romans chapter 1, verse 24 to 28. So make sure you guys subscribe, not also to this channel, but my second channel too. I'm going to be making more of those series on that video. Or sorry, on that channel. So yeah, love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.